Hello everybody. Today we return to the Great Bush Railway at Tinkers Park, home of the Claude Jessett Collection, to take a look at our second continental steam engine, but this time we're on the two foot gauge. Today we're taking a look at Sao Domingos. She is an Allstein and Koppel locomotive, and much like Ruston, they class their locomotives by power. So this one is a 40 horsepower. So 40 horsepower, 060, because quite literally, that's what it is. Now, this one was built in the December of 1928 in Druitzwerk in Berlin, Germany. And it pretty much looks like any other Allstein and Koppel locomotive. It's a very distinctive shape of these engines. It has these quite large cylinders on the side, the sand dome, normal dome, and of course it is a well tank, which means that the water, rather than being held as you might think in there, no, no, that's cold storage in there, the water is in here, in the frames, which means when it's full of water, it's quite heavy, you know, and well balanced is, because everything is low down. That's a very O and K feature. When she was built, she was built to 600 millimeter gauge, which on the continent is very popular. And over here, not so much because we did two foot and yeah, they're different things. And she went off to Portugal, brand new, sent off to Portugal to go work in a mine in, okay guys, I'm gonna not be able to pronounce this particularly well, so I'm gonna put this up on the screen next door to me because I can't pronounce Portugal places. And it was delivered new to, I have to check the phone for this, Empress Carniforia do Giorno SA for use at Minas de Perio, which was a coal mine north of Pedronino in northern Portugal. I appreciate it. that will be pronounced totally wrong, but uh, yeah. And it's there that she was given the name Sao Domingos, which in some religion, I believe the Roman Catholicism, translated into English is a saint, I think Saint Martin or something similar, and is an important figure of in that part of the world. And so it had the name from new and has carried its name all the way through its life. Now, Sao Domingos is quite a large name, but quite a small locomotive. So everyone here just calls it Ming. Let me take that bit. Ming, which is a much nicer and smaller name for a little locomotive. Now, it worked this coal mine for its entire life, which really makes total sense, doesn't it? Running steam engines and coal mine because you've got the fuel to run it readily available you know, it's just coming out the overhead. It doesn't actually cost you anything extra to run the locomotive. And he did this until 1972, where the mine shut down. Number 11784 was brought to the UK by Alan Keefe and Michael Crofts. And now begins a long list of places that this locomotive visited and tried to call its home, but didn't. And bearing in mind, this locomotive didn't actually run at any of these places. So originally it went to a new venture called Pleasure Rail which had been a brand new tourist venture. The locomotive went on static display at Nebworth Park in Stevenage. And it just sat there and didn't do anything until 1980. So it was purchased by the Durnham Narrow Gauge Group, who took it back to their base at Alston, which is on the, the South Tynesdale Railway. And it arrived there in a partly disassembled condition, and at which point they realized it desperately needed a new boiler. The boiler was just condemned and not reusable. So once again, it sat around and nothing really happened. It was just a kit of parts. The decision was finally made to overhaul this and commission a brand new boiler to be built by the Jones brothers in Preston. And they started building it in 1987 and finished it, I think in 1989. So it took a couple of years to build. And it was built alongside two other Allstein and Couple locomotives having new boilers. And these two were from the East Lanks Railway. And so they, they did a batch of them all together. Cause, yeah, that made sense because the boilers were all pretty similar. So that was good. And the idea was that this was going to run at the North Tynesdale Railway, but it very quickly became apparent that it isn't really big enough or powerful enough to do the service that they need. So it changed hands again, and this time it moved down to Kent. It went down to the Brengar and Worms Hill Railway. And that was in 2002. 2003, it changed hands again, being bought by a private owner who decided he was going to overhaul it, finish putting it back together again, and run it on his own private railway. But that didn't happen. Most of the bits stayed at the Brenger and Worms Hill Railway. The main kind of frames and the main body of the engine moved. And then the gentleman's circumstances changed and it was put up for sale again in 2004. This time it was purchased by the Claude Jessup Trust and came here to the Great Bush Railway, where finally it was put back together 
and for the first time in 35 years of being in the UK, it steamed. Now, I say that like it was an easy task. It wasn't. All of this, the side tanks of cold storage area, the cab, and a whole host of other little features and fittings had to be remade and fixed to get this running again. And I think it's fair to say that the Great Bush Railway has done a really good job. It looks really smart. It is a nice little looking little engine. And she's just come back from having her most recent 10 year ticket. So she's just had an overhaul. And honestly, they say they found very little wrong with it. It was take apart, examine everything, go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's all right. And she's come back in record time. She's only been away for about a year. And you know what? She, it's really smart. They've done a lot of work to it. The most notable thing is they've adjusted the regulator, so they tell me. When I drove this before, it had a very stiff regulator, which was kind of like driving a rocket. It was, uh, and we're going. Whereas now they tell me it's greatly improved. Apart from that, it's been cleaned and had a new coat of paint. I've always loved the shape of these little O and K engines. They're so easy to recognize. You can see one a mile off and go, that's an O and K. They have this very long chimney Generally, they have the two domes, the steam dome here, and the sand dome here. Which brings me through to a couple of things that aren't quite finished on this engine. Because you see there's a, a pipe here. This is for the sanded equipment, which presently is attached. There's a valve the other side, which will open the sanders, which will drain sand out of this. And presently, all it will do is add sand to the running board. So that's um, not quite how it is. Oh, that's... Uh, work in progress. This lovely shiny whistle behind me also does not work because similar to a situation we had at the Mid Suffolk a few years ago, the neighbours don't like the sound of the whistling so we can't whistle so it's been blanked so we can't use it which is really upsetting to be honest. Apart from that it's pretty good. The other thing to notice about it is the middle driving set wheels they're flangeless to allow it to go around steeper curves because it is you know, quite a, a decent wheelbase engine and they're meant to be able to go around to nice, steep industrial sidings in industrial places. Now, as you can probably hear from the sound of the blower working, my friend James has already lit the fire in this and he's starting to bring it round. So that's something I don't need to do. But as a driver, we've now got to have a look at oiling up and getting this engine ready for today's work. So let's do that. Oof. One of the first things we can do is check in the well tank, make sure we actually have water. And uh, to be honest, I can't see any water in there, so we probably should uh, put the hose in that. Other things I really like about this engine are handy little storage areas tucked in the side, spare corks, tools, just this well thought out having a little extra area on it. That's just, I like that. Put that back in there. It's a clever little design. It's designed to be used. It's designed to, you know, for real people in a real world. Now, oil. It is a phenomenally easy locomotive to oil up. There's no need for a pit because everything is on the outside. And even if there was a pit, you wouldn't want to get underneath it because there's a tank there. It's, there's no space. So simply, Steam oil goes in there, and all we do is shoot a bit of oil into this, into that, into there. We fill this up here on the slide bar, just a couple of bits in there. Make sure the, uh, there's oil in there. Another bit, bottom of the crank there. Follow it back. Just imagine a bit of oil into there. That was already full, that's good. A little oil groove here bit down into linkage, a bit here and here. That's uh, in place. There, yeah, that's oily. Another bit down here at the bottom of the return. <coughs> Oops, get that in there, fill up that. There's a little divot in here as the rods connect. Oh, I've got to get behind there, haven't I? I forgot that. Where on earth? Oh, that's awkward. Right down behind there. Another rod bearing there. Yuck. And then finally, 
the return crank that drives the valve gear. A bit of oil into that. And then the big end. And that there. Now, they're all quite full because they're quite clever here and they fill things up on a, on a fairly somewhat regular basis. And here we have our little steam oil mechanical lubricator which just pushes steam oil through to the cylinders. Run that pipeline there which comes through here into the cylinders. And one good oil up will see this engine through basically an entire day's running. So all I've got to do now is repeat this on the other side. And that's it, that's all the lubrication done. And that's fantastic. I like your simple engines. Especially on the narrow gauge, simple engines to oil up are delightful. So from here, I'm about to get in the cab. So let's go and have a look at the cab and see what everything does. On board, the most obvious feature are these two very long gauge protectors and columns. The water's actually only in this bit here, but the rest of it is column. And this bit here is actually a bit of floor design. When you have the injector on, or the pump on, because this engine has an injector on that side, and there's a little steam donkey pump fitted down there, which is a, quite a weird little thing. I'll, I'll fire that up in a minute to show you, because that's just weird. The water fills from up here, through the pipes here, and ends up filling up the gauge glasses. So whilst you're filling water into the engine, you can't actually see what your water level is, which is um, annoying to say the least. In the middle here, we've got the shutter for the manifold. This one here, which is leaking a little bit, that's the steam on for the injector, and the water feed is here. The handle hidden here, that should work the sanders if they were attached, but they're not. This thing here is the cinder cox, which is apparently a fireman's control rather than a driver's control. So there's lots of communication between the driver and the fireman as you're going along saying, please shut the cox or open them. And below that, there is the damper, which opens the flap underneath the fire. And that actually opens quite a long way. They will go right open. Here we have the fire hole door with our, our little fire burning away, courtesy of my fireman, James. And it's a tiny little firebox. But the engine actually builds and makes steam really easily. It steams really nicely on a very small firebox. And it's got this very nice feature here, if I find my rag, that you can open these holes here, which gives you some little more holes that allow the airflow to come in. So you've got a little bit of secondary air coming through there, and then you can shut it off like that. I like that, that's quite nice. The reverser is tucked away here, in a nice place, with the driving position very much here. Steam on for your steam pump is this one. Pressure gauge is up there, and this thing blows off about 180 psi. And then we have some connections here so we can run with air fitted stock. We can't create air, but there is a tap just here so I can destroy air. So I, when I'm working with air stock, we can put the brakes on. And the blower itself is just, just that little tap there, that's the blower. And finally, this tiny, tiny little lever here is the regulator. And just hidden here where originally we probably would have had coal, there's a nice little toolbox where we can put all kinds of useful gubbins. And then coal space over tucked in there, that's that's our, a large coal bunker, which goes quite a long way to the front of the engine. And that, honestly, is about it on this. I really like these little things. I like the cabs. They're nice. There's enough room to move around. And with these massive great windows, there is airflow, which is so important on a day like this. The only thing really it's lacking that would be nice is a seat. Oh, and of course, over here, we have the handbrake. Now, originally, these engines were fitted with a weighted continental style one, which you kind of throw over and that puts the handbrake on. This one's on a screw thread, and it is a very, very long thread. Putting the handbrake on revolves, involves an awful lot of turning this thing. And frankly, it's just, it's an alarming handbrake to use, because you will take it off and start rolling and then put it on and go, right, come on, start working, start working, start working, start working. Oh, there we go. When it does bite, it's very good and stops the train and will start training the several wagons on this quite steep railway very easily. It's just kind of alarming waiting for it to get in there and bite. So that's it, that's basically a look at this lovely little German locomotive. So all that remains now is to, well, let's take it for a run and see what it's like.
away from San Domingo. Is it does sound lovely. Followed closely by, doesn't half rattle around the track quite a lot. I mean, it's a two foot gauge engine and they do rather bounce and rattle around. And it's six coupled, so it does find, a, find the edge of the rail and kind of, well, let you know that it's found it. The most apparent thing on it is the regulator is, well, um, it's interesting, is this regulator. Since I last drove it, the locomotive has had an overhaul, which should be improved matters. And yes, the first port is a lot more controllable and you can ease the engine into motion so much more easily, it's, it's a delight. The problem is, when going up the bank here, you know, the first port doesn't have, say, quite enough oomph to uh, make it all the way up, which means we need to go into a second port. And there, my friends, lies the bit of the challenge, because you see now, hard port, hard port, nothing, so suddenly, big lout, big noise. And it's, um, yeah. It's basically got either 10% or 100%. There's nothing in between here. 10% or 100. Which is frankly a little bit terrifying. Coming up there at speed. But now we're back into first port. It's lovely and controllable again. So we can't complain with that too much. The other thing that's not ideal is the lack of a locomotive brake other than the handle. And it's a screw thread. And it's a very long screw thread. And getting the brake on and to feel happy with the brake is actually it's a bit of a challenge. very nice. It does ride bumpy two foot gauge track remarkably well. And you know what? It's a nice big cab. There's plenty of room here for me and my fireman James today. There's plenty of room for us to move around. We're not on top of each other. In fact, there's probably more room on this than there are some standing gauge engines that I've worked on. So that's fine. And we've got some nice big windows letting in an awful lot of air on a, a warm day like this, which helps keep us cool. And also providing rather good visibility. I'm very happy what I can see out the front of this engine. It's, it's actually pretty good. Everything in here is lag nicely as well. You know, you're not really going to burn yourself too badly. Everything is sensibly covered. It's a very well thought out little engine in all honesty. And when you do open it up, it sounds amazing. It's also quite nice in there. Free running, you know, it rolls very nicely into, a, into the station here as we come in. It's just a very trouble thing. locomotive I've ever driven and it's only not the easiest line I've ever driven on both are um, somewhat taxing that you have to think some locomotives and some railways are a nice day out a nice gentle day out green, green light thank you this railway and this engine you have to think you have to keep your wits about you and it makes it a bit of a challenge, which is nice, because it, it, this is a challenging day out. It's a good day out. It's a good day out, and we like coming down here. And we like this engine, but, yeah. 
Oh. It's a challenge. this engine really does give though it's a massive sense of power it feels quite powerful it only weighs nine tons so 40 horsepower versus nine tons it's got as much power as my 48 which really doesn't sound like an awful lot to say but it has the most lovely bark it sounds delightful it feels powerful and I really like the fact that I've got a steam chest pressure gauge here so I can see how much steam I've got going to the cinders. Just makes driving a little bit easier. Listen to that, it is fantastic. It is, it's such a good engine, it's a challenge. But sometimes you don't want everything to be absolutely perfect, you want it to be a bit of a challenge. And you know what, it's brilliant. It's absolutely, absolutely 100% brilliant. Me and my fireman today, James, we've come down here several times and we love it. It's just a fantastic place to be. There's so much to do and look at. And driving Ming up and down here, honestly, I don't think there's anything better than driving this little engine up and down here. It, yeah, it's one of the best things you can do. Little two foot gauge steam engine, trundling around on a silly steep light railway, which is more or less what he was built to do when it was working in a mine. this look at Ming, an Orsteiner Koppel steam locomotive. And the first steam engine we've looked at on the two foot gauge here at Lorry Ghost Loco. I have really enjoyed being out on this engine. It's a little bit of a challenge, it takes some getting used to, but at the end of the day, you have a real feel of satisfaction for achieving it and getting through. And let's be honest, it is a gorgeous looking little locomotive. And a massive thank you to the Great Bush Railway for letting me come down and have a go on Ming today and review it for you guys. I've loved it, it's great. And I know the guys here love it as well and they're super proud of their one working steam engine. And who wouldn't be? It is just, it's great. It's a lovely little engine and it's absolutely perfect for what they want here down at Tinkers Park. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and drop a comment. Let me know what you think about this engine and if you've enjoyed seeing it. And also guys, if you like what you see in the video, there's a link to the Great Bush Railway website. Please get in contact with them if you'd like to come and be part of it and volunteer. They'd love to have you here. And if you've enjoyed this look at Tinkers Park, how about clicking up here for the Ruston 48 slash 44 that I did down here. Or if you fancy looking at a steam engine on the larger gauge, Here's a video of a steam engine on standard gauge that I did. Cheer guys. Thanks for watching.